Do you have a vacuum table on your CNC and you're having trouble with parts moving? Are you blaming the CNC or your vacuum? The problem could be as simple as your spoil board. Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Co. Your problem probably isn't with the CNC, but with your spoil board. Your spoil board is the true first line of defense for any CNC machine. And what I mean by that is it's the building block or the foundation of everything. There are two things that make a CNC cut precisely and accurately, stability and a flat bed. The rigidity and stability of your CNC machine should come in the form of its mass and its weight, how heavy the machine is. That's where your foundation starts. But the most important thing on the entire table when it comes down to cutting is how the spool board is put on. Especially if you're using a vacuum table, we're going to go over how to properly put on a spool board, whether it being a vacuum table CNC or a traditional non-vac system. Essentially, your spool board is the basis for all CNC work that you're ever going to do on your machine. It provides a substrate that you can cut into and not worry about damaging the actual CNC bed itself. So first thing I want to go over is what is a spool board? Now, just like in its name, it's a board that you can spoil or sometimes they're referred to as waste boards. It's any type of substrate underneath your project that you're cutting that allows you to plunge deeper through your material and cut into the board without worrying about destroying your CNC bed. Sometimes you'll really destroy a spool board before you want to flatten it. But in my sense, I want to have accurate depths all the time, so I flatten my spool board pretty regularly. Now, pretty regularly is a term that is very sparingly used and can widely differ from one operator to the next. You can always tell the experience of an operator or the usage from somebody's spool board. An experienced operator is going to barely even cut the surface of the spool board, no matter what they're doing. Learning your materials and setting your Z height accurately can lead you to not needing to replace a spool board for months or even a year. Sometimes the board gets really, really beat up, just like I did here when I had a little bit of an oopsie. But most of the time you're going to have these fine little grooves. The plan is always to just be able to cut barely into your spool board so that you ensure that you're cutting through your material but not damaging your spool board all that much. Now you're going to install a spool board on a vacuum table and a non-vacuum table almost the exact same way. There's slight different variations in the process and we'll get into that here in just a second. Now, I would say that you can use two different types of material for a spool board, depending on what you're doing. Traditional CNC work, you're going to want an MDF or even an LDF spool board. Now what that difference is, especially for vacuum, is that MDF is medium density and LDF is low density. One is going to pull air a little bit better. The low density is going to have a little bit faster movement of airflow, so your suction may be a little bit better. But it's a double-edged sword because the low density will get destroyed a little bit faster and the MDF will hold up to a little bit more abuse over time. So it's extremely important to add your spool board to a CNC the correct way. Now with a vacuum table, you have to take more consideration of how things are going on the table and how this is going to affect the physics of the vacuum holdout. I'm going to lay out the proper steps of attaching a spool board to any CNC machine, but keep in mind, this is going to be geared more towards vacuum table CNCs. My machine is a Phantom CNC systems unit with four controllable vacuum zones. So with any of the Phantom CNC vacuum table machines, you're going to have multiple zones that you can control the suction to a specific area of the table. Now you can apply a spool board just right on top of this substrate or Phantom CNC also sends you gasket material to put within each zone. This is going to help to increase the suction to that area, especially if you've got other zones turned off. The way a vacuum table works is actually you don't have a vacuum table until you put a spool board on top of the CNC. And what that means is that when you don't have your spool board on, this vacuum port is just open to pull outside air. There's nothing to constrain it or control that vacuum into a specific area. Putting the gaskets all the way around your zones do help to control it, but you don't actually create that vacuum area until you have a complete spool board all the way on top. But there's actually a lot more to it than that. So a lot of people think that once everything's down on gasket wise, you can just set your spool board right on top of it, flatten it, and you're good to go. The problem with that is that this gasket, it's a cushiony material and it's higher than the actual substrate of the CNC. When you put your spool board right on top of it, 
it's actually floating on that. And you can see that when I push it down, there's a lot of space and movement vertically on that MDF spool board. The problem with allowing your spool board to sort of float on top of the CNC bed is that you're actually never gonna have a truly flat spool board. And for production runs and accuracy, that's extremely important. What you're wanting to do is to make sure that the MDF is tight, tight down to the table so that when you turn your vacuum off, there is no vertical movement. Every time you turn your vacuum on, that bed is gonna pull that MDF spool board down tight to the table. When you turn it off, it's gonna raise back up again. All right, let's be honest too. MDF has just a couple purposes. And the reason why most people don't like it is because MDF is a big wooden sponge. It's just gonna soak up water, right? Every time you turn your vacuum on, it's pulling outside air from the environment, the humidity, and it's drawing it in through that MDF spoil board. So you want to make sure that you have the ability to flatten your spool board very accurately every time. Screwing that spool board down to the table really tight is gonna ensure that you can do that. The good thing about the Phantom CNC machines is that they already come pre-cut with the multiple zones in it. Now the hard thing is when you want to screw down your spool board, you wanna make sure to screw it down in between the zones so you don't affect your vacuum at all. The way to do that is very simple. So to ensure that I put a screw exactly where I want it in between each multi-zone, all I'm gonna do is take a Sharpie and I'm gonna mark a line everywhere that there is a zone divide. That way when I put my MDF spool board down on top, I can still tell exactly where those zone divides are. Before we actually put our spool board down on top of our table, we wanna take one more step to ensure that we're controlling the airflow coming through the spool board. We wanna make sure that all that airflow is coming from the top and going into our spool board from up above. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna seal the edge of our spool board all the way around. And you can do this in a variety of ways. There's a variety of products that you use to seal the edge of your MDF spool board. I like to use rubber cement, even flex seal, any latex paint that you have left over from a previous project, or my actual favorite is Tybond Quick and Thick. Now that we sealed the edge of our spool board, it's technically time to go ahead and put it on the CNC bed. MDF comes with a primer layer already built into it. The same exact reason why we sealed the edge of our spool board here, the factory that created the MDF uses a primer layer on both faces. That way it reduces the chance of moisture and air getting into the board. Well, for our situation and the vacuum table, we want to cut that primer layer off so we open up the fibers of that board and allow that airflow in through there a lot easier. Before you put your spool board down on top of the CNC table, you wanna make sure that the surface is nice and clean. So you want to vacuum it. Do not blow it off because you don't want dust going down into the vacuum ports built into the table. So the first thing that we're gonna do now that the spool board is technically on the table is we need to flatten one side. We're gonna let the CNC do that. Because of that primer layer on here, it's allowing air to sort of get trapped underneath and it's not allowing that air to escape through the layers of this fiber board. So we're gonna use the CNC and the vacuum table to hold this board down, flatten it one good time, then flip it over and continue the process. The very first file that you'll ever run on your CNC and the first one you'll ever create will be your spool board flattening file. It's a great learning tool. It's the easiest file to create and it's the best one for you to learn how to use your software and control the CNC for the first time. All you do is draw up your file, load it into your CNC, turn your vacuum on, and go ahead and run the file. Now here is a perfect example of why we always screw our spool board down tight to the table. If you don't have it tight down to the table, that board is allowed to float, and wherever suction is can pull it down tighter than other areas. You can see that right here in these four zones. Everywhere that one of these multi-zones is, the concentration of air was pulling down a lot harder right at that port and it allowed for this area to not get flattened by the CNC. So we're gonna ensure that this doesn't happen throughout the spool board by screwing it down on our final pass. If you see something like this, you want to go ahead and run your flattening file again to make sure you cut all that primer layer off. Anytime you're applying your spool board down to the table, just make sure that you're not dragging the spool board across the surface. You don't want to affect that grid gasket and dislodge it from the zones. So this is where our Sharpie marks are actually going to be able to come into play. We're going to be able to know exactly where the zones are so that we can place our screws throughout the spool board in the right place. So we're going to run a chalk line all the way across from Sharpie mark to Sharpie mark throughout the table so we know exactly where to screw in our spool board. 
The easiest way to do this is to actually turn the vacuum on on your machine to allow that to help hold down this workpiece. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put about five screws across each zone of the table. So on a big five by 10 machine, I'm gonna put at least 30 screws throughout this spoil board just to make sure again that it's nice and tight down to the table so that we can always have a nice flat surface. What I like to use to screw the spool board down to the CNC is actually sheet metal screws, but you can use any type of screw that has a really wide head and a shallow profile. The purpose of this is to be able to get that screw as deep down into your MDF as you can so that you have as many flattenings throughout the, the months uh, of the spool board and you don't have to worry about nicking or running into one of these screws. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna screw these throughout these chalk lines. We're gonna drill a small little pilot hole all the way down through the MDF spool board into the Bakelite substrate. Then we're gonna take a bigger drill bit that's bigger than the size of the head of the screw and we're actually gonna countersink it way down deep. Now on three quarter inch MDF, you can go down to about 3 16 left in the material before you really wanna stop. That way you don't drill all the way through your MDF and you don't create that bond between the table and the substrate here. All right, so now that we've got the spool board nice and screwed down tight to the table, we're gonna run our flattening pass until we guarantee that everything is perfectly flat throughout the board. Typically, you should be able to get about 12 to 15 flattenings out of your spool board before you have to replace it. The only reason that you're really replacing it is because the spool board finally gets so thin that you start to risk cutting into the screws that are holding the spool board down to the table. So we're not quite finished yet. We've got one last step that we need to do. You may hear when you turn your vacuum on, you're gonna hear some air leaks around the side between the substrate Bakelite table and your MDF spoil board. So what we need to do is take some silicone and go all the way around the perimeter of your MDF spool board and just make sure that we seal that edge all the way through. Because again, we want to contain all airflow coming through the top of the spool board and nothing being wasted along the edges. Don't worry about the silicone on top of your CNC bed. All you have to do is scrape it off next time you want to replace your spool board. It's critical to have a good secured and flat spool board to ensure that all of your cutting is accurate and that you're not having pieces move because of bad vacuum hold. It's just like building a home foundation. The home is only as stable and safe if it has a good solid foundation. It's so important to have a properly applied spool board. You will fight with your CNC and materials forever if you skimp on this. There are additional measures that you can take to help prevent movement of even the smallest part on your CNC with vacuum. I go over all of that in a previous video about the physics of your CNC table. Understanding how something works really helps you to perfect your cutting, so I hope you check that video out. There is a link to it right up here and in the description below. I want you to get the most out of your CNC and good hold down ability always leads to more efficiency, productivity, and well-performing machine. And really, at the end of the day, you want a pleasant and profitable CNC experience. So I hope this has helped you in a big way. Please think about liking and subscribing because we are gonna keep bringing out CNC and laser content. And until next time, have fun with your CNC.